Um, I'm talking about consultation models today, and basically they are frameworks used by medical professionals to structure interactions with patients in order to achieve the aim of the consultation. And these models help to ensure that the consultations are comprehensive, they are patient-centered and efficient as well. There are a number of consultation models, but I'll be dwelling on the most common ones. And while discussing these models, I'll try to paint an image of them, um, hoping that that helps with recollecting the details. Right, so I think there are about seven of them on the slide. The first one is the Cam Calgary Cambridge model. And with the Calgary Cambridge model, um, it's good to imagine it as a bridge. The word says Calgary Cambridge model. So essentially it's like a bridge, bridging the relationship between the patient and the doctor. Um, and it entails initiating the session, the consultation itself. With that, they look into things like preparing ahead, looking through the patient's details, their notes. And then when they come in, introducing yourself, identifying the patient, establishing rapport, and the reason for their attendance. Um, gathering information, basically going into things like the complaint, the history of the presenting complaint, their eyes, their ideas, um, concerns and expectations, and then the examination findings, if it's applicable as well. Then giving information to the patient, essentially making a diagnosis, and a management plan explaining this as well to the patients, hoping to achieve shared understanding between the doctor and the patients. Thereafter, closing the session, giving safety netting advice, um, follow up if appropriate, and forward planning. So, for Calgary Cambridge, is building a bridge, building the relationship within between the patient and the doctor. The next one is the Stewart model. With the steward model, um, I think with this one, it's good to imagine a good steward who wants to enhance the um, patient's health by things like um, incorporating disease prevention and health promotion, thereby enhancing the doctor-patient relationship. Again, like every other model of consultation, exploring the disease itself, the illness experience on the part of the patients and then understanding, trying to understand the whole person. After that, finding a common ground and using that to explain what the plan will be, as well as being realistic in terms of the time allocated for the consultation and the available resources also. Um, next on the list is the Pendleton model. With the Pendleton model, and try to imagine it as a pendulum and um, with a pendulum it's critical to find a balance so with the pendleton importantly is finding a balance um which involves some multitasking it focuses on eyes basically the ideas of the patients the concerns of the patients the expectations of the patients and how all these are met with the Pendleton model, the doctor defines the reason for the patient's attendance. This is where the ice comes in. And then they consider other problems that could come up as well. They choose an appropriate action for each of these problems in order to achieve a shared understanding of the problems. They make sure that they involve the patients in the management and encourage them to accept appropriate responsibility as well as manage the time allocated for that um, consultation. So it's multitasking, finding a balance with the pendulum that describes the ice which they've come in with. Fraser, Fraser is um, a doctor who is quite thorough and diligent. He's more interested in relating to patients, meticulous with his red record keeping as well 
And when the patient comes in, he tries to solve their problems, find out why they are there, take a history, physical examination, form a plan, uh, make a diagnosis, and also looks into things like anticipatory. Um, neighbor model, um, it consists of five things basically. Connecting, summarizing, handing over, safety netting, and housekeeping. Um, let's try to imagine good neighbors would like to connect with you if they see something out of the usual they'll give you a heads up summarize it for you and if you've got things like deliveries they can hand them over to them as well um so with the neighbor neighbor is essentially a doctor that connects with his patients is to build a rapport with them when they come in summarizing is the eye suspects, what are their ideas, what's their expectation with regards to their complaint, what are they concerned about. Handing over is discussing the management options with them and then handing over control to them so that they can make an informed decision based on the shared understanding that the doctor and the patient have. And then safety netting is about dealing with uncertainty worst case scenario, what you can do in the worst case of that particular complaint, how you can seek further help as it comes up. And then housekeeping is about the doctor themselves, how they are getting ready to see the next patient. Are they okay? Do they need a break? Do they need to debrief? Things like that. So that's how to remember neighbor. And then for Tocket, Tocket is a meeting of two experts. And when we say experts, imagine a scenario where you have two experts um, and they are smartly dressed with their shirts tucked in. That's how I try to remember it. Um, and then with Tocket, the doctor being the expert in the medical field and then the patient being the expert in terms of their own experience of their illness. Again, the aim of the consultation is a shared understanding, making sure that the patient understands, doctor to understands why the patient is there. And the doctor should then try to understand the patient's belief and based on the patient's belief, also address the explanations in terms where the patient can relate to. Okay. And the last one is the Stott and Davis um, model. With Stott and Davis, um, it's essentially just four things. The acronym can be MOM, M-O-M-M, -M, MOM. With MOM, it's the first a management of the presenting problems. The second O is opportunistic health promotion, which can be chipped in if applicable um along the consultation the other aim is management of continuing problems so essentially it's managing both the acute and the chronic problems of the patient and the last aim is modification of health seeking behavior knowing when to seek urgent help and things like that so these are the most common models there are some other models as well they're not so common um so other ones include things like balance. People that have done psych may be familiar with that, where it's just the doctor and the patient focusing more on their feelings and how it affects the consultation and how that um, brings about the whole management plan, basically. But these seven are the most common ones.